All right. Recipe website. All right. Dear Billy Pumpkinhead. Oh, come on, guys. I'm feeling down this week. Can't you can't somebody just say, you know, Billy not that ugly? I mean, can't you just give me that, you know? All right. I have heard you express your displeasure with internet recipe websites. Oh my God, that happened to me again today. I was trying to learn how to make something. And she says, you know, since I've been a kid, French cuisine has always interested me. I don't give a fuck. Just tell me how to make it. Why are you turning it into a fucking mini series there? You know what? I'm going to look up a fucking recipe. Let's just, you pick a fucking recipe. I'm going to do some, I'm going to do the most basic one. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich recipe. Literally, the name of the fucking dish is the recipe. Let's see how long somebody can drag this out. All right. Clicking on it. Here we go. All right, you know what? I found the one. This is one they just, it just says, spread the peanut butter on one piece of bread, spread the jelly on the other side, put the two pieces of bread together to form a sandwich. Toddler adaption, cut off crust before serving. All right, I think they covered all the bases. All right, I got to go a little further than this. Let's just look up. Uh, there we go. Let's go, we'll go a little. Um, spaghetti. Spaghetti sauce recipe. Here we go. Here we go. I spelled spaghetti wrong. Okay, here we go. Homemade spaghetti sauce. Okay. And here we go. All right. This spaghetti sauce recipe may be the first thing I learned to cook completely by myself when I was really young. Wow, that was one of the worst sentences I... Jeez. As I got better at cooking and baking, parentheses, and because I loved it so much, and parentheses, I can specifically remember two recipes my mom would let me make all by myself. This homemade spaghetti sauce and our family favorites. For some reason, then it says pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. She'd be nearby for supervision, but it was a huge confidence boost for me to cook all on my own. I don't give a shit! And an even bigger confidence boost when my older brothers said they liked the food. Emoji. This homemade spaghetti sauce recipe has been a family staple for as long as I can remember. I've been, I've been waiting to figure out how to fucking make it since as long as I've been, I can remember. It's like I'm reliving your childhood here. It's really simple. And the flavors are fantastic. This is one of those meals that always tastes amazing. They just keep going, going and going and going. All right. That actually wasn't that bad. Sort of a quick thing. Look at her. She's a sweetheart, too. Oh, God. Welcome. I'm Lauren, a mom of four and a lover of good food. I'm sorry, Lauren. Just in a bad mood. You know what I mean? You know what's funny? That fat fuck who didn't wear the mask, he's probably sitting at home right now eating the spaghetti sauce. Wiping his, using his mask as a napkin. <laughs> He's got to tuck to the front of his shirt. Uh, why can't I get all these little fuzzies off this windscreen? Okay, here we go. Anyways, he said, uh, and having to, let me start this over again. Uh, I've heard you express your displeasure with the internet recipe websites and having to scroll through a long backstory about their childhood. Look at that. Was, or some unrelated BS before they show us the recipe. I found the answer to your problem on Reddit. Someone made and shared a website that you can copy and paste the URL of the recipe page into, and it strips away all the clutter to just give you the recipe. Here is the link for the website. I'm reading it to all of you. www.justtherecipe.app. Ah, another million-dollar idea. I would just listen to my complaints and actually try to... You know what? You guys, listen to my complaints, whatever I'm bitching about, right? You fucking make it. You make the money, and I'll buy it. I don't give a fuck. Uh, you're welcome, and go fuck yourself from Delaware. Thank you so much. app. Hang on a second. Oh, my God. If there was ever an app made for me. Here we go. 
recipe. What was it? Dot app? I never know how to spell recipe. I have a four E except after C. R E C I P E. Did I spell it right? Oh, I spelled it wrong. Did I spell it right? I spelled it R E C I P I E. Oh, God, Bill. Just a recipe. Just a fax, Bill. Jesus Christ, this is taking me longer to type than it does for these fucking assholes to tell you to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Uh, recipe. Recipe. And what is it? Dot app? Slide. Oh, dot app. A P P. A P P. Just the recipe. Get just the ingredients and directions for any recipe. No life story, no pop ups, no email list. Paste the recipe. Well, how do I get to it? Ah, Jesus Christ. All right. Whatever. You guys can figure it out. You're young. You got your whole lives ahead of you. You got time to figure it out. Um, all right. Minimalist living. Okay. For those of you who didn't listen the last time, I was making fun of those people that live in small houses. Not that it's a bad thing to do. I think it's a great thing to do. But actually going into that house and having to listen to that person fucking sit there like they cracked the code of living. I don't know. I forget what I said. I probably said something fucked up. And I imagine this is somebody who lives in a little house. Going to give me shit. All right. Dear Billy Acetate. uh, I heard you shitting on tiny homes a couple of podcasts ago. As an owner of a fabulous 400 square foot tiny home, I was triggered. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry that I got 99% of America. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, oh, I'm so sorry that I and 99% of America can't afford your 4,000 square foot old house. Hey, buddy, buddy, I was you. Okay, that I just didn't accept a fucking tiny house. Go write some jokes and get on. Stop acting like I'm some trust fund kid. Um, he goes, I have everything I ever needed consolidated into one small area. This is why I don't want to go into these people's houses. If you came into my house, I wouldn't sit there and tell, talk to you about the square footage and all the stuff I had. I would ask you what you want to drink. This is, you're proving my point. If I went into your fucking house, I'd have to sit there and listen to you telling me how fucking great it is the whole time. Uh, minimalist living isn't just about housing. It's a lifestyle. See, see, see what I said? I share a smart car with my wife and I own, I only own three outfits of clothing. Even my dog is small. Uh, Let me guess, you probably waste food and are too good for leftovers. (laughs) Dude, let me tell you something. I am a fucking animal. My wife gives me shit. I go into the goddamn fridge like a fucking bear. Do you know, I was on my way to eat something, and there was a little salmon cake left in this little sad plastic bag. I'm like, that might be going bad. I don't give a shit. I don't want to waste it. But I just fucking ate it, and it tasted like shit, and I still finished it. So fuck you and your little fucking house and your oversized ego. Um, anyway, how about you start? You know, I, you're, if everybody's like you, then little houses are for quitters. Um, how about you start thinking about the environment and your overall impact? Why don't you go break down some more boxes for Nia and leave us minimalists alone? (laughs) Ah, shit. Sir, I'm sure now that you have, you know, only three outfits, you have time to sit around and think about what your dream is. And why don't you go after it? Okay. That right there is the exact. I literally said on the podcast, I wouldn't want to go into some guy's little fucking house because I'd have to listen to his fucking ideology. And then you send me an email. I was making fun of the ideology, not that you're doing it. At what point did I, did I put my fucking house in your house's face? I didn't do it. <laughs> I love when that happens. Come on, I want to hear from more of you little house fucking holier-than-thou fucking assholes. I love how you think because I live in this fucking house that I don't... You don't even want my house even looks like that you think that I don't fucking recycle. <laughs> anyway. Any shit I don't want, I just bring it over to the fucking homeless people. 
I'm already sell it on eBay. You don't know me, you fucking dickhead. You're in this you little ass fucking house, and all of a sudden you're better than me. Fuck you. All right. Enjoy your walk-in closet. Go fuck yourself. All right. Uh, lady listener here. Oh, I love when I hear from the ladies. Uh, lady listener here. Dear Bill- <laughs> Dear Billard Bald. Uh, that's like a name out of a fairy tale. Everyone enjoyed the party except for old Billard Bald. He crawled out from underneath his bridge. Um, all right. You are my favorite comedian. I love the podcast. I'm a lady listener who's getting a bit fed up, however. Oh, Jesus. You spend so much time ranting about how women need material object. Is it possible that that's not all women? Yes, but that doesn't make it funny. Uh, or just the ones you're into. Wow, everybody got triggered today. I'm not trying to Dr. Phil analyze you here. Just make a point. Uh, you're not making a point. You're presenting your opinion. All right. So don't stop patting yourself on the back and your back before your bra snaps. Um, in the podcast, you always advise men to get the most beautiful early draft pick female possible. Then seem surprised when her personality is shit. Oh God, this woman's mediocre looking too. I honestly don't know where you meet these women who want stuff so bad. And oh, and now she's putting herself on a fucking pedestal and acts so nasty unless you are literally just seeking attractiveness. In that case, isn't that on the guy who picks her? Not on women as a gender? Oh, oh, I see what you're doing. You're, you're saying that only beautiful women are acting that way. Oh, I get it. Yeah, that's right. Only beautiful women want to be taken out on Valentine's Day. They're the only ones that pressure you for a ring. They're the only ones going on Amazon buying more shit than they need. It's only the beautiful women. Plain Janes like yourself, ah, you're down to earth. Anyway, every beautiful lady I know works hard, pays her own bills. Oh, Jesus, this fairy tale. And struggles to find a man who doesn't live with his parents at age 30 or addicted to porn or video games. All right. I, I, okay. The, the second hat, addicted to porn and video games. I'll give you that. All right. But let's, let's take it down here. Let's take it down here with all these beautiful women. Oh, they all work hard. They all pay. The, yeah, everyone's a fucking astronaut. I know. Uh, that's our side of things that you seldom address. Um, all right. Well, then can you look at yourself critically? Consider I just said, yeah, most guys are addicted to porn and video games. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. All right. But you be honest with me. Is it one of the first questions you ask a guy when you meet him at a bar is, what do you do for a living? Well, and I get that, you know, you don't want to marry some fucking loser, right? But if I fucking look across the bar, what am I I'm supposed to fucking get with what? Some chick with a face like a cuckoo clock, you know? When are you women going to just get over the fact, you know, some of you that you're not as good looking as the other ones? If I can do that as a guy, you know? <laughs> I mean, I don't, if you're looking for sympathy for me because you're the female version of my face, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, welcome to the club. All right? At least you get to keep your hair. He goes, maybe it's time to retire the all women want material objects bit or at least add some female perspective. Then you can get ladies laughing too. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Because you're not laughing? Because, oh, you know what? This was the classic... You're my favorite queen. I have a great sense of humor. And now I'm going to take the piss out of you. Oh, Jesus. I walked into that one. Um, listen, there's plenty of other podcasts out there. If you don't like this one, don't fucking listen to it. All right. But I don't hear you fucking, you know, there's plenty of shit, guys shit that I make fun of on here. You somehow don't seem to hear it. The only, you know, you're just like that classic douche that goes to a comedy show now where everything's a joke until it comes around to your neck of the woods. All right. I'm sorry. I guess you didn't get enough free drinks bought your way. And uh, you and all your unicorn, beautiful lady friends who all work hard and pay your own bills. All right. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. And every guy I know fucking uh, respects women and helps old ladies cross the street. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, we're both animals. Okay. And um, I don't know. I guess I will retire the all women. Wa- I don't say all women, but I just, you know. I lump it into a group, you know, I'm sure, you know, yeah, I know. You know, when you go down Rodeo Drive, when you go into a mall and all of that shit, I mean, come on. Who do you think's buying most of that shit? 
you know? Who do they put the fucking pressure on in advertising? In, in like a relationship thing. There is not one fucking holiday out there, lady, where the pressure is on you that you got to fucking wow the guy. The holiday does not exist. Doesn't exist. Buy her the shit. Buy her the shit. Buy her the shit. Um, all right. But, I, you know, I know. Listen, listen. I, like I've always said, you know, I can find you a white guy with a big dick that can dunk a basketball, but that doesn't make it the norm, does it? Um, all right. Anyways, so whatever. I mean, I, I'd love to meet all these beautiful ladies that you hang out with that pay their own bills and struggle to find a man. But I, I understand that part. Struggles who doesn't live with his parents at age 30 and is addicted to porn and, and, and video games. I mean, you fucking nailed it there. You fucking nailed it. I'm not getting offended. You're kind of lumping all these guys in, in, into a... You're kind of doing what I'm doing, aren't you? Maybe you want to co-host this. We'll do a little co-hosting thing. You can fucking trash guys. I don't give a fuck. Um, oh, God. All the sensitive people. Maybe you want to fuck that guy in his little house. <laughs> He's a minimalist. He doesn't have time for a laptop. He won't have porn or video games. You guys can live happily ever after. All right. Our girlfriend caught snooping. Found something hard to explain. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's hope this person has a sense of humor. Hey there, you fancy freckled fuck. <laughs> uh, I get the title. Uh, may sound a little bit, a little clickbaity, but follow me on this one. I've been seeing this girl for about a year and a few months. For about a year and a few months. Me personally, I would have said I've been seeing this girl a little over a year, but I get what you guys are doing now. You write awkward sentences trying to trip me up because I'm not good at reading out loud. Uh, anyway, and it's been nothing but a, day, a dream come true for the most part. Uh, we are very different as I'm fairly committed to my work and have a shit ton of motivation. Parentheses, thanks to you, actually. Hey, you see that plain Jane? I'm not all bad. Shit. Mm. Well, she has a bit of a lazy personality. Um, but thankfully, I've been pushing her to improve her habits while she helps me unwind and takes my mind off work so I can relax. Well, there you go. Yeah. She's got to turn it up a little bit. You got to turn it down. Overall, we pair really nice. Okay. Okay. What can go wrong? What can go wrong? What can go wrong? Um, all right. Now that the context is out of the way, I got a new phone on December 31st. The girl's friend spent the night at my place, and when I woke up, I left for work. Everything was going great until I got a text from her. And it said, you haven't been with any other girls, have you? I told her no, that I'd swear on a Bible. I thought I was, it was maybe some insecurity creeping in, and she wanted some reassurance. Then I got a voice memo of her bawling her fucking eyes out. Oh, no. She said, I know I shouldn't have done this. And it was the wrong thing to do. And I'm sorry, but I went through your old phone and I found text messages between you and another girl. This was back in June and she sent you nudes. Oh, boy. Uh -huh. Now here's where it gets tricky, Bill. She wasn't wrong, but it wasn't me cheating. My buddies and I have participated in some stupid contests for years that we called Chub Fest. It's a stupid kid thing that we should have grown out of, but it's been tradition. Basically, we all have to try and get nudes from the fattest chick possible in the span of two weeks. Winner gets $300. Oh, dude. Through the years, we didn't want our girlfriends to know for obvious reasons. Oh, yeah, dude. Yo, Jesus. What were you thinking? But we are all good-looking dudes who would never cheat with a 250-pound girl when we all date sevens to nines. Oh, my God. The chick who wrote that other email right now is fucking their head spinning around. It's a stupid thing for boys, and it is great for a laugh, albeit it's a little mean. Yeah, come on, man. But we never would consider being unfaithful to our partners if we had them. Dude, you can't do that to people. Even if you weren't in that relationship, don't fucking do that. Uh, this entire thing woke me up to how immature and shitty this is. I really do feel shame for this bad joke taken too far. I told her I can explain this, but it may sound like a lie. So call my little brother, ask him what Chubfest is, and it should clear it up. She said she would rather hear it from me, so I explained the whole thing. 
Oh, my God. Could you even look her in the eye? It seems like she understood and was no longer heartbroken and believed me. I guess it might have been too fucking dumb to make up. That said, my question is this. How do I move forward? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I, yeah, yeah, dude, this is above my pay grade, but I'm going to keep reading here. She expressed how apologetic she is for snooping through my phone. Going through all... Now I feel bad. I was making fun of that fat guy not wearing a mask. You guys think I hate fatties. I don't. I just hate people don't wear masks. If you're fat, I make fun of you wearing fat. But I would never do that to somebody. Come on, man. Um, I was going to say that's low-hanging fruit, but that's kind of a fat joke too, isn't it? Oh, jeez. She's expressed how apologetic she is for snooping through my phone, going through all of my messages since fucking March of last year, and understands it was wrong. But surely this can't be a one-off thing, right? I can't really expect her to not invade my privacy again, can I? If I do, do I look like a bitch to her subconsciously? I'm totally lost, Bill, and I appreciate some wisdom out of that shiny noggin you got. Uh, Love the podcast. You've inspired me to improve my habits and attitudes towards life for years, and I really do owe you a lot. My success. All that said, go fuck yourself. Um, You got to talk to your girlfriend. You got to talk to her and just say how wrong you were about that other shit. And then you got to burn a lot of sage, man. That's that's some fucking bad karma. Um, But then you kind of got to I mean, what do you, you don't have a leg to stand on here. She snooped and she found a bunch of naked chicks, right? Um, I don't know, dude. So and then you guys all looked at the naked fat chicks and you just laugh at them? Yeah. Listen, I'm a cunt, but Jesus Christ, dude. That, that's really, uh, that's really, I don't know. That's, uh, I don't like bullies. I don't like that shit. I don't know what to tell you, dude. I would just fucking, look, you said you looked at it, now you're embarrassed by it. Maybe this was a good thing because that happened. But um, I don't know how to fix this one, man. I mean, she snooped and she found something. So, like, now what? I would just say <laughs> either you got to move on or you got to live a squeaky clean life, one or the other. And then eventually she's going to feel like she doesn't need the fucking look. I guess that's it. Uh, you got you to gotta, you gotta sit down and talk to her, try to rebuild some sort of trust there. And uh, come on, man, with the fucking chub fest. Don't do that shit. Um, all right, Adam Curtis documentary. Um, okay, Dear Billy Band-Aid, about six months ago, a listener wrote in suggesting you watch a documentary called Hyper Normalization. I doubt you have yet because I think if you had, you'd mention it on the podcast. Yeah, I, I don't want to watch what I already sense, okay? If I watch this shit, it's just, it's, I, I can't watch that stuff because... Nobody else is questioning it. I've been that guy that watches that shit and then tries to talk to the people. All you do is bum them out. All right, they're in the Matrix. They're watching the Kardashians. They're watching the Super Bowl. And just just let them just stay there. I will read this if you guys, because some of you want, might want to be into this, but I can't watch this, this type of shit. Uh, the filmmaker Adam Kurz just released his latest documentary on his YouTube page where this guy's doing God's work, by the way. Uh, where the others live as well. Wait, I missed this here. Um, The filmmaker Adam Curtis just released his latest documentary on his YouTube page, where the others live as well. Oh, meaning the other documentaries are there. Uh, This new one is fascinating, and I really urge you to check it out. It's called Can't Get You Out of My Head. He's very well-respected in the UK. The best part of his documentary is that he gives you lots of information, perspective, and footage of different parts of history you would otherwise not know much about. Now, that's interesting. If he's just going to make me paranoid, you know, I mean, I can do that on my own. And his new one, Can't Get You Out of My Head, he takes you through things like radicals in West Berlin and bloodshed in communist China. Remind yourself of this when you wonder how he gets away with talking about the CIA, the British Empire, and banks while receiving a wide BBC broadcast. Despite those subjects coming up, he's not a conspiracy theorist and never regarded as one. Okay, okay, so he's, okay. 
Check it out, mate. Love you and love the podcast. I'm going to watch that. Because it seems to not get branded as that, there's got to be some sort of levity to it. But if it's just like there's lizard people and shapeshifters and they're putting this chemical in your food, it's just like, okay, I don't know how to grow my own apples. So, like, I, what do... All right, sorry about that. I hit the wrong button. I was trying to see how much time I did. Um, yeah, I don't... Uh, if it's all that, that shapeshifter stuff, I can't watch that shit. But if it's, it's somebody that's like can talk about it in a more like balanced way that you can actually get on a mainstream thing. I'll definitely check that out. Uh, once again, the guy, the filmmaker is Adam Curtis. All right. Um, all right. That is it. That is the podcast. All right. Now let's not, let's not fucking go down this road. People every once in a while, haven't had to do this in a while. That lady there is taking the shit that I'm saying about women too seriously. The guy in his little fucking little pig, little pig, let me in house. You know, he's taking what I'm saying a little too fucking, you know, personally. What a cunt that guy was, huh? You know, can you imagine being a bigger cunt than your house? <laughs> How do you fit all that cuntiness in that little house? Um, He's actually way ahead of the game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a, a, some props to that guy. I would love to only have three fucking outfits or whatever. Do the Einstein thing. I would fucking love to do that. My problem is, is I'm sentimental. So I have all these fucking T-shirts that I got at gigs that people gave me or they give me a backstory. And they give me, I can't get rid of this shit. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've walked in my closet and just want to just grab handfuls of stuff, take it down to the tent city, and then, and then, but what happens is, is people, they just, they just keep sending you more shit. I can't remember the last time I, you know, when it's fucked up, when I was living on a futon, you know, no manager, no agent, just flaming out in my professional and personal life, eating spaghettios, right? You know, I had to buy everything. And the weirdest thing is you get past a certain level and you can actually afford things, then everybody wants to give you shit. But then you also kind of realize, and then they're tr- hoping you're going to wear it and then walk around like a fucking, you know, free advertising. I don't know what it is. It's just everybody always gives you like a fucking T-shirt or some shit. All, when you, if, you get in, if, you, if you're into T-shirts, get into show business because you will have more free fucking T-shirts than you know what to do with. Uh, I should do that. You guys want some T-shirts? Maybe I'll do that. Um, Bill's, uh, Bill's free t-shirt giveaway. Then I have all these fucking suits that I never wear anymore, but I wore them when I was on Letterman or I wore them on Conan back in the day and they mean something to me. But now that I'm such an old comic, they're completely out of style. What the fuck do I do with those? I'll be honest with you, little house people. I wish I never went down this fucking road, but I'm so far down this road. I don't know. I don't know what to do now. You know, I'm sitting here right now and I'm looking at, I have a little miniature double bass drum kit that you set up that somebody gave to me when I was like in Germany. And it's like, how do I get rid of that? I went all the way to Germany and there was somebody who gave a fuck, not only enough to show up to the show, they gave me a gift. What do I do with that thing? Now I can't throw it. Every time I look at that thing, I think that's some guy in Germany gave me that. How fucking cool is that? Then I'm also thinking, I wish I never had that because now it's just something fucking else I have sitting there. I don't know. I got to tell you, for all the fucking years I've been in this business, I only have one closet full of shit. It's all I do have. Um, But there is a lot to say about the minimalist lifestyle. I'm just fucking around, okay? I know there's a bunch of great women out there. I married one. Okay, but I'm a comedian. I make fun of shit. And I know there's not every fat fucking person out there is not wearing a mask. And I know when they eat their food, they're smart enough to take the mask off. But where's the comedy? Okay, do I get all fucking upset when somebody calls me Billy Pumpkinhead or Billiard Bald? You call me Billiard Bald, did I get all fucking mad? You know, I didn't have no hair in me in show business. I didn't do that, did I? I fucking laughed. Fancy, freckled fuck. Alliteration. It's insulting. Come on, people. Grow the fuck up, all right? All right, that's the podcast. Go fuck yourselves. Even the beautiful women that pay their own way and can't find... All right, that's it. Uh, I'll check in on you. 
On Thursday, go Bruins, go Celtics, go fuck yourselves.